Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today I have a very special Patreon collab to share with you. For this collab I decided to use the theme of winter so that it was pretty open to interpretation and gave a lot of creative freedom. Joining me in the collab is Rainbow Fine Art, Lady Luna Emery, The Merry Mess, and Dancing Johari. I've left links in the description box with their social media so please be sure to check out their dolls and give them some much deserved love. I'm using a G3 Clio for my base doll. That does mean I will have to make all new patterns for her clothing, unfortunately. But I plan to digitize them and share them with my patrons. For the skirt, I'm using this purple fabric. However, I thought the good side was a bit too shiny, so I'll be using the wrong side of the fabric. I sew a bit of gold trim to the bottom, then gather the top of the skirt and attach the waistband. I sew up the back, making sure to leave the opening large enough to fit her hips and attach a Velcro closure. Due to her hip to waist ratio, I added a ribbon to the crotch to keep the skirt from riding up. I cut out all the pattern pieces for the jacket and get started with the sleeves first. I attach the cuffs with right sides facing, then embellish them with trim. I couldn't find trim in the scale that I wanted, so I'm hand stitching on gold chain instead. I try to make sure to keep the chain out of the seam allowance. Try being the keyword here. That's going to come back and bite me later. I hem the collar and peplum pieces along the inner and outer edges. Next, I attach the sleeves and then I slap on the collar. With those pieces attached, I can sew up the sleeves and the side seams. Remember how I said I tried to avoid the seam allowance? Well, I didn't leave enough space, so it broke my thread. At least it was only broken thread and not a broken needle, right? I really should have stitched it on the trim after sewing the sides. It wound up being too thick to flip right side out anyway, so I had to remove it and then stitch it on again afterwards. Even though it was a big headache, the cuffs did turn out super cute. When I think of winter, my brain automatically thinks Christmas. My family's really big on decorating the whole house, and I actually put up three full-size trees on top of countless other decor on every surface. I've wanted to make a nutcracker for a while now, and I figured this was the perfect opportunity to make a pretty pastel one. I added a faux leather belt for embellishment, but it needs more, so I mark where I'm going to stitch on the chain and button sets. I'm only stitching down the ends of the chain so that they'll have some movement. This doll was a Christmas gift for my daughter. Every time I make a doll, she'll ask me if I plan on selling it, and most of the time I tell her yes, but she'll ask if she can buy it with her allowance, so I figured it was time she was on the receiving end. It's been quite a while since I've given her a fully repainted doll. Last year I gifted her an LPS figure, and I previously made her a little delightful bunny, but it's been more than three years for a doll, and I've improved a lot since then. I hand stitch gold beads and flourishes made from bead caps onto the blouse with golden thread. I added a simple butt cape with a bow to give the outfit another pop of color, and I absolutely love how it turned out. The pastel color palette is so delicate and dreamy. Let's move on to the accessories. I discovered that Disney Descendants shoes will fit the new G3 dolls, so I pulled these out of my stock box to customize. I do need to trim off some of these pieces, so I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to remove them. After that, I can get them painted. I did try my hand at making some shoes out of fabric, but my first two attempts looked awful, so I scrapped the idea and decided to go this route. I wound up getting really sick while I was working on this doll and wasn't able to work for about a week. Even when I was finally feeling good enough to work, I still wasn't feeling great, so when things weren't going well, it made it really hard to want to keep experimenting. Even though this wasn't what I originally envisioned, I do like how they turned out. For the hat, I cut base pieces out of thin cardboard to cover in fabric. I take the long rectangle and tape the ends together, then slather it in contact cement. When the glue is tacky but no longer wet, I wrap it in the fabric. I've left plenty of extra fabric at the top and the bottom that I will clip into small sections and glue to the inside for a neater appearance. I wanted to take a moment to thank all of my friends over on Patreon. They help make these videos possible. Angel Bookwalter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Jay Zur, Shirley Kauchikini, Stephanie L., Hanu Made This, Josephine, Delicious, The Merry Mess, Me Water Lily, Amber S., Awkward Burb, Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Dancing Johari, Echo 1911, Kitsy, Kay Whippell, Lindsay, Oak Magpie, Tara N., and Totally Spooky. After the finishing touches, the hat is done and so adorable. 
I was originally on the fence with the feather, but I think it gives it a bit of dramatic flair. I decided she needed one more accessory, and a drum fit the part perfectly. I designed one in 3D and sent it over to the Reflex for printing. I popped it off quickly and got it washed. And yes, that is Moonlight Jewel's edit of the delightful bunny you're seeing. I sent these out to my Dynamite Tear patrons this month as an extra special tear reward. After the parts have had their initial wash, I give them a dunk in boiling water to make removing the supports a bit easier. I pop them into the cure station to cure. Yes, I have quite a way with words. I added drain holes to the model because I printed it hollow to save on resin and weight, but those need to be closed now, so I use some UV resin. Usually when you see drums, they have these ties along the sides to keep the top and bottom taut, but I knew it would be a pain to print and paint, so I had the idea to use chain. I modeled these pegs around the rims, and I will attach some chain onto jump rings that are just big enough to fit onto the pegs, and then glue them in place. I wasn't 100% sure this would work, but before I can move forward, I need to paint the drum. I gave it a coat of spray primer, then added on the base colors and a bit of shading for depth. I did want the center of the drum to have that candy coating like look that drums have, so I mixed up a glaze coat that has some mica powder in it, and once it was dry, I gave it a shiny gloss coat of UV resin. Now to attach these chains. I loop the jump ring onto the peg, add some UV resin, and then top that with a nail art stud and cure. This works so well and I love how it turned out. I finished off the drum with a strap that goes around the waist so that it doesn't cover up any of the details on her top. I even printed tiny little drumsticks. Tap, 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 tap. Ah, love it! Time for the face up. I prepped her like I usually do with three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, and I got to work with my various watercolor pencils and pastels. A full list of supplies is available in the video description. I had a really hard time starting this face up. I have been dealing with some burnout recently, paired with stress, and I kept putting off starting it for no real reason. Every time I thought about working on it, a profound feeling of dread would set in, and I still don't understand why. I know I've been pushing myself too hard in recent months with my art, home life, and external commitments, and it's caused me a lot of undue anxiety, and making it harder for me to find joy in my art. This coming new year, my resolution is to try to reassess my priorities and set realistic expectations on myself. I have to remember not to compare myself to other people, both artists and moms. You never know what they're dealing with, and just because it may seem easy from the outside, they could be thinking the same about you. I know I'm my own worst enemy because this pressure comes from me. Logically, I know these things, but emotionally, I am a hot mess. Thanks for listening to me and letting me unpack my feelings onto you. I know you came for a doll repaint, so let's jump back over to her. This face-up came together surprisingly easy, even though I was dragging my feet to start. It wound up only taking me around three hours to finish, not counting drying time in between layers of MSC. I'm already on layer two, and I have begun to add details into the eyes. I want to keep her makeup very minimal, so I'm not going with any heavy colors on the lips or eyes. I'm mainly sticking to shading and contouring around the face with a light amount of blushing up to the cheeks. On a fresh layer, I first sketch in her eyebrows with pastels, then add in the individual hairs with a pencil. I did decide to go with brown brows instead of the light minty blue that's her hair color. Her skin is so dark that I felt like a light color brow would be too distracting. The tip of my favorite brush is starting to split, so I have ordered another that I hope is similar because I never could figure out where this one came from. I'm convinced it was a freebie with some nail art stuff I got, so fingers crossed. I add in the rosy circles that is a nutcracker staple. I don't want them to be too harsh though, so I erase around the edges and add pastels to soften it. I add in catch lights and highlights to her waterline and finally commit to the mouth lines. I originally was on the fence and earlier I had lightly sketched them in, but without the rosy cheeks, they seemed out of place. I'm glad I reconsidered because I feel like she would have been incomplete without them. But with that, the face up's done and I think she's just perfect. Just because this is a gift for my daughter doesn't mean I can forego the storage box and the certificate of authenticity. I want her to have the full experience, so I get everything cut out and engraved on my X-Tool M1 laser. Honestly, seeing her face when she tore open the package and saw the box logo was priceless and worth the effort. 
I'm so lucky to have such a great kid that appreciates art too. Don't forget this doll was part of my Patreon winter collab, so be sure to check out all of their amazing creations. The links are in the description box. I did decide to name this little nutcracker drummer Ginger. If you're interested in one of my dolls, I do have a few available for purchase on my Etsy shop, Lady Dynamite Creates. I wanted to thank you so much for watching this video and staying to the end, and remember, always be creating.